I'm trying to, uh, to find out what he knows about um, how to change government. Um, and he is a tech giant, and I'm the, try, I'm the guy who's trying to extract as much as possible out of him. So, Diego is not much on stage. Uh, let me give you a little more background to him. He grew up like a talented and, and um, very ambitious young Italian. Normally does, he went to Bocconi. Um, and after Bocconi, he did what an ambitious young Italian does. He went to Fiat. Uh, and after... For um, not too long. After two years, Short. he did what an... A talented and, and uh, ambitious young Italian does. He left Fiat uh, to look for an international career. He did it with Apple. Um, he stayed with Apple in interesting and difficult times. Um, jobs returned in 1997, and he was in the core team um, to turn around uh, Apple. And end of 1999, he decided to leave Apple for Amazon, which was a small company at the time. Uh, and Jeff Bezos was saying, you are dumb like a rock. Um, and I know that Amazon had, in these days was a totally different company from what all of you know today. It was a company running out of money. Uh, Jeff Bezos, 2001, 2002, was looking for money in many places. Among these places was Germany, so he visited many people in Germany to find money. So it was a total different story. And he did really build up the international business, and I did run the numbers. Um, Amazon International would make a Fortune 500 company. So he basically did build over these 16, 17 years a Fortune 500 company uh, in, in, um, in, uh, in international for Amazon. So a huge success, and I'm very happy um, to have him on stage. Um, I could ask him, have you been dumped like a rock um, when you changed to Italy um, to support Mr. Renzi? But my real question is, what trick Renzi has to do to convince you to come to Roma, um, instead continuing a career in one of the best firms on the planet. Well, um, by the way, I have a small correction. It was Steve Jobs that told me I was as dumb as a rock going to Amazon, not Jeff yes. Bezos. Yes. No, no. <laughs> no, but Jeff Be Bezos, if he, if, if he was really smart, he would say you are dumb like a rock going to Italy. Yes, that is actually the... No, I, I, funny enough, when, I, when, uh, when uh, uh, Matteo Renzi, by the way, Matteo Renzi was Prime Minister of Italy and had, when the Democratic Party had 42% of the votes, and that was two and a half years ago, which politically is a geological era ago. Now in the last election he had 18%, just to give you the idea of the trend. Um, when I joined Amazon back into early 2000, I told Jeff, I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know that at some point I want to go back to Europe, I want to go back to Italy, to help what I believe is an incredibly slow, complicated place. And uh, Renzi at some point visited the Silicon Valley, the Italian consul in San Francisco called me, would you like to have breakfast with Renzi? That was mid-2016, it happened there, uh, keeping the very long story short, it was several months of iterations. When I spoke to Jeff about, yeah, I'd like to leave Amazon because I want to do this, he still remembered the 16 year before a conversation that I told him I'd like to help Italy at some point. So that was the main reason. I think that uh, uh, God, besides you know, the, the spirit of help and give back, which is fine, but my point is that I think Europe, Italy especially, need to look at governments that today are seen most of the time as a liability, and believe me, I'm not a dreamer, well, a kind of a dreamer, as a potential competitive tool. It sounds strange, I believe people here are rolling their eyes, but project 10, 15, 20 years from now, and I believe there's gonna be a different Europe, if we're capable of transforming digitally governments, and, government and digital transformation is a forcing function for simplification, we are adding one important aspect of com being competitive for European technology environment. Um, Diego, I want to touch on a, on a couple of issues. Um, what government should achieve digital? And I think there are three dimensions, administration, infrastructure, uh, and transformation of economy and society. Let us start with the first one. Um, when I think about administration in Italy, um, uh, something comes to my mind. When I think about Amazon um, and how to run Amazon, um, I think about day one organization, I think about bar raising, I think about agile, I think about OKR, I think about customer centricity. 
Um, most likely, the opposite would come to my mind if I think about the Italian administration. Um, yes. How, By the way, many, how, how, not how, just Italian administrations, many administrations yeah, but in general, you, but we are special at that, I agree. Yeah, you, we have you, a special. But, but you decided to go there. So it's, it's not a Prussian administration. No. Maybe slightly better, but, but not that, a total different. That's the point. I mean, Germany, believe me, the German administrations are not more digital than the Italian administration. The point is that your analog part works. My question is, what can you really achieve uh, with, given that situation and how? Yes. So well, the conversation with Renzi was very simple. First of all, it's not, it's not even, it's day one in e-commerce. You can imagine what is day 0 0.1 in digital government. Um, the first thing is that I don't want to be an advisor to the prime minister. Okay? It's, it's, it, you don't help much with advising because very soon you advise, they don't understand what you tell them anyway, so they don't do it. I want, and it's serious, it's serious. I, I want to build things. And the, first th the only thing I asked is, I want to have the possibility to hire people from the outside. I think the presentation from, uh, the, from Pepper, building within an incumbent a digital transformation activity, which is really, really hard, is exactly what we did. I hired, within three or four months, 30 people, now there are almost 50, uh, mainly technology people. I know that digital transformation is not just about technology, but believe me, technology does matter. The good thing is that in order to transform digitally a government, you don't need quantum computing. It's pretty basic algorithms that you need to do, and it's people, brains that you need to change, and culture. And, uh, and therefore, we built a startup within the government. I was talking to the existing digital transformation department, which is the department that had more paper than I've ever seen in my life. And I said, Rain, Matteo, there's no way I'm going to lead those guys. You can't. Just leave them there. And uh, we need to build something from scratch. And uh, we started working on projects. We built a digital identity platform, a digital payment platforms. And obviously, the biggest part is a, national, a unified national register with all the data of, 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 uh, of citizens. I'm going to say customers, but that's the point. And many other enabling projects. But what we need to think is, uh, um, the, obviously, the hardest part is adoption. Adoption by the departments and adoption by citizens, also because unlike you know, banking or e-commerce, people don't interact with governments every day. So a digital interaction is not part of your daily habit. You, and most of the times you're just used to think government don't work much, so you don't even think that there is a digital, but it's gonna uh, interaction. It's gonna take time, it's gonna happen. I wanna show you just a very quick slide. Can I, can you put it in the background, please? There it is. So um, this is called io.italia.it. It's in closed beta. And uh, I, um, she asked the question, uh, the, the CEO of, uh, of, of Pepper, um, and I apologize if I don't remember your name. Sorry for that. Yeah, uh, How many of you use mobile banking? And you, most of you raise your hand. And uh, correct, and if I'm gonna ask the same question, how many of you used the mobile banking five or seven or eight years ago? I'm sure that the number is much lower. The point is that how many people use mobile government to interact with government? You do in a few situations, especially if you live in Estonia, and uh, you do for single transactions. The idea here is how do I pretty much have my entire relations with the public administration in an app? And uh, um, obviously, the starting point is this. I mean, in order to get there, this is the, this is the chaos. It's the network of 8,000 in, uh, in Italy, 8,000 municipalities, 13,000 public administrations, um, everybody on different legacy systems. But the point is, if you don't start now, and we started two years ago, some other government started 15 years ago, you never get to that. And how you get to that, you get to that very simply. It's building API for each single service that are within government. There are more than 100. And, uh, and uh, integrate those APIs within each 
administration, which is a nightmare of a job. But again, you better start now if you want to have it by 2030 working and making sure that everybody interacts that way. And as you see here, we have uh, municipalities, we have counties, which are the provinces in Italy. You have IMPS, which is the welfare. It's, a, it's the biggest and over time is going to be even uh, more transactions between an elderly populations and the welfare departments. It's uh, the automobile, uh, the, the transportation department. Those are the departments where we're pretty much uh, cooperating with. And for each one of them, you are building services, microservices, on messages, on preferences, on documentations, on payments, on the National Register, digital domicile, I mean, all those things. And, uh, and, and at the end of the day, you're going to have all the messages from and to the public administration on your phone, all payments, because think about the kind of transactions we citizens have. We receive and give information. We receive and give money. Most of the times we give more money than we receive, obviously. Um, we look at all the documents that are needed. We set the preferences. And uh, um, we use archiving. Again, we need to think in that way. As you think of, I do mobile banking with one app. Think about doing mobile government in one app. That's the vision we need to go. And I think that's also one way to get Europe leapfrog. I'm an optimist here. In order to work the government, optimism and courage is a must. Will give us a chance. The optimism is a must for the citizens or for the politicians? Uh, it's definitely it's a must for the citizens. I'm taking your seriously, the question seriously. I know it wasn't that much. Um, I don't know about politicians. Um, is it lasting? So when I think about lasting transformation, three things come to my mind. You build an organization that is shielded to the rest. You have direct CEO access. Um, and then you grow as many people as necessary and possible to move it into the existing organization, to bring transformation to the existing organization. Um, so you did shield it in the first place. Uh, I understand you had direct access to the CEO, which in that case most likely is prime minister. The half-time value of prime ministers is Top-down approach. Agreed. Yeah. Half-time value in Italy of prime ministers is something like two and a half years. Uh, I had the three prime ministers in 27 months, correct? D uh, d can, could, could, See, in Germany you have an analog of 15 years of the same... Yeah, but in some cases is a challenge in itself. <laughs> Um, so, the, my, but my point is, um, how do you make sure that this has a place on the agenda of the next CEO, of the next prime minister? And did you grow enough people to make that change lasting? Um, the answer is, when this new government was elected, uh, the first thing they wanted is to me to be out, because obviously I belong to the previous government. And uh, normally, what you would do you would give up, you would say, screw you, I did my best, I'll stop here. I bet Theresa May has tried to say that multiple times. Uh, and in fact, I decided not to do that, and I decided to pretty much undertake the challenge of explaining. So my team, since March, the elections, to now, was doing the work, and my work went from leading a technology team and a process team to become a communicator, to communicate to this new government. In, I had so many one-to-one -one meetings, one-to-two meetings, one-to-three meetings, multiple meetings, to explain that no matter what the political label is, you want that. And, uh, and uh, it was kind of hard, but at the end of the day, and I'm expressing no value judgment on this government, otherwise it's a completely different conversation, um, they got it. The same people that were saying Diego should leave when Renzi lost the referendum. By the way, I lost my prime minister three months into my job, just to be clear. I joined in September, he lost the referendum in December. Uh, are the same people that understood the importance of this, and not only understood the importance of this, understood the fact that there is a team working on it. And I explained, it's the most, I think the most important success for me was not the projects, was the continuation model. I mean, I had appointed a new commissioner, because sorry, I left, I, I committed for two years, I stayed 27 months, but I allowed my team to continue. I presented to the prime minister a successor from within the public administration. I found a rare gem, and I got the rare gem, I was lucky. It's, it's this person continuing the work we've done. It's building scalable and repeatable processes. 
and continuation. Those are the two things that are, in my opinion, the most successful. Because it's going to take 10 years, 15 years, 20 years to build all of this. And you can't, every political election, stop and rebuild. Let's move for a second to infrastructure. Um, when, when the discussion in Germany uh, is about how to change digital to make it a better place and so on and so forth, the discussion immediately is that we have to invest more in infrastructure and telecommunication. Um, that can be G5, broadband, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, that we have to spend more money with universities on AI. Um, what should we do from your point of view once it comes to infrastructures and what's the role of governments? I, I think that, first of all, the role of governments, in my opinion, in order to be most effective, is to make the life of corporations and citizens simple. That is just, that's the basic stuff. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and this is going to take a long time. I don't know if I'm going to see it, and I don't know if you're going to see it. But um, it's, it's the basic stuff. You, you need to make sure that the transactions with governments are flawless. I mean, in Italy, if you are a company, you need to open, I don't know, McDonald's, you need to open 25 outlets in 25 different municipalities, you have to deal with 25 different permit processes. I'm probably exaggerating, maybe it's 20, but it's, it's that kind of stuff that governments need to make it much simpler. And that's why I do think that digital transformation is a forcing function to make that happen. Can a good that's, so that's, that's then there are a funding for AI, awesome. Uh, I think that the most important thing that governments in Europe need to do, especially the Italian government, is money on education. Education, education, education. It's, uh, I was discussing, and now put money, uh, this one I'm gonna say is controversial. Let's not try to build the Google of Europe or the Google of Germany. Let's invent the future, not copy what others did 10 years ago. And the Google of Silicon Valley, by the way, if you look at the, um, the number of engineers in it, most of them are from Europe. Yep. When you are saying education, what kind of education do you have on your mind? I, for Italy, it's education in general. Unfortunately, Italy is among the lowest number of graduates, university graduates in Europe. It's, it's, that was my scariest metric that I had to face. Uh, it's obviously go back to STEM, it's all science, technology. Um, by the way, Grazia, the CTO of Airbus, is also from Milano, so Milano is a good place to stay. Uh, and I think it's definitely that. I am on the board of uh, Bocconi University. It's still think education is important. Bocconi University introduced, for example, a mandatory Python coding class first year as a freshman. So it's this new, it, not, not everybody will start coding, but at least you get into the mind of being at the logical um, process. So I, I think it's about really science, tech, math, quantitative, that's, that's where Europe really need to go. And also then create the environment for which not only those people don't go outside, but also attract the others. Attracts from, from the States, from Africa, from, from, uh, from Asia. If you compare government and the, let's say, the question of e-government and compare it in Europe to the US or in Italy to the US, are we lagging behind? Are we... It's strangely enough, by the way, um, I inspire myself to two things, one in the UK, one in the US called UK Digital Service and US Digital Service. If, I don't know if you remember this debacle of the Obamacare when the website for, for the exchange of Obamacare pretty much collapsed and he asked for yeah. help, and they, they created the U.S. Digital and Service. And even the election process. Yes. So, uh, strangely enough, in the States, it's all over the map. I was, uh, I replaced online my driving license in 2002. I had to pay with the check in Seattle. I had to pay with the check my property taxes in San Diego County three months ago. Check. How many, when, when did you write a check? I still have to write a check and send the check to the San Diego County because the, their digital payment platform didn't work. So it's, it's scattered. It's really scattered. That's why I do think that building a competitive digital government can really help you. Um, that Europe is lagging behind um, often comes with the argument we didn't build these super giants. So we didn't build the trillion dollar companies. Um, and is, is that the right benchmark? Is that the right, thing? Is, is that the right way to think about 
um, that we are lagging behind, or do we have an advantage? I, I, uh, because we could be much better in regulation, for instance, and because we have more competition, we could have better products. Sure. Uh, the answer is obviously, it's, you heard many, many aspects of that. Education is one of them. I, I just want to say, you, you said something interesting. We did not build. Who is we? We entrepreneurs. Okay. Uh, because the Googles, the Amazon, the whatever. They are here. They are. So they're definitely available. here. But the point is that we have so many other points where so, and we, at this point, entrepreneurs in Europe and Europe in general, that goes to, I mean, I, I was in Europe for two and a half years in Rome. I go back to the States, all of a sudden realize how backward the States is in mobile payments, for example or in wireless connection. So there are so many fields where, but their advent, where, where Europe is way ahead and we should really invest in those. And I think again, uh, machine learning expertise and the right level of investments in machine learning is a key factor. By the way, Amazon machine learning, most one of the most productive machine learning departments is in Berlin and in Cambridge. So it's, it's, it's I mean, the talents are available. Um, I think that the U.S., besides the much lower level of bureaucracy, besides the uh, whatever, Silicon Valley, all the books written about the Silicon Valley growth, they have a much higher propensity to consumers. If you think that's, that's a big piece that Europe does not have. I mean, the B2C part, I think if, if, if you look at Amazon as a B2C company, Google is a B2C company, and all the rest, are the ones where, where the U.S. also leveraged on a very high consumer-focused um, propensity versus Europe where, I mean, when Amazon goes into a country like Italy or Germany and simply apply the normal Amazon behavior when we started in uh, Italy in 2010, people were crying in tears of joy that someone would actually pick up the phone and answer and would actually make it easy to return products. Before my regulator kicks me off, I have uh, two final questions. The first one is, is there any kind of personal learning from that situation? You must have learned a lot working with Bezos and on the subject you did before. Same thing at, at Apple. Is there anything that you take home from those two and a half, year, uh, uh, from, from those two and a half years? Well, uh, first of all, what I'm taking home is, I'll start with a funny but real anecdote, which is I have learned to be a very, I thought I was a pretty good negotiator. I learned to be a very good negotiator when the other part is irrational. <laughs> it's, believe me, it helps. I know, it by, helps. by the way, I now understand what my mistake was because I had a negotiation with him on the phone 10 years back when we were selling AB books and we had one phone call. That is a, the, the only interaction we had over a very long period of time until we met last summer. And I was by far too rational. I, I could have had a much better deal yeah. by negotiating. I guess being emotionally. Italian, you have the irrationality DNA built into it. So that's, it's, a, it's a competitive <laughs> advantage. It's a competitive advantage for me. Um, <laughs> the, the other thing is that um, you guys would not believe the need for government, which means for us to have skilled people making decisions. Skilled people, intellectually skilled, technologically skilled, basic project management skilled. Uh, I didn't bring artificial intelligence and blockchain to the Italian government. I brought basic project management skills. And my point is, the model that we're building for which, I mean, if you had asked me, do you want to work for the Italian government for the rest of your life? The answer was, heck no. But do you want to work on a specific project where, I don't know, you're going to be building APIs for the health system for two years? The answer is yes. So I do think that all of us, all of you, at some point in your career, obviously the government needs to build the processes, right? For you, you should go there, you don't waste your time. Need to be back because the, we need the government's efficient. I mean, those guys are taking a real important decision for us. And most of them just... They're not competent enough. Diego, you, you have two uh, pieces of advice. One goes to the Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, Mrs. Angela Merkel. She's around for the normal lifespan of an Italian prime minister. That means two and a half years. Um, and Mr. Juncker. 
or his successor. What is the one advice you give to Becker? What is the one advice to give to Brussels? Oh my gosh, you're asking me really, really hard questions. Um, I think Angela needs to make sure that there is a great succession plan in place. <laughs> Europe needs Germany, and Germany needs to be stable. I mean, there are not, not everything is positive within your government, but I think, thanks God, Germany does exist within, within Europe because it pushes Europe. And uh, the point is that also Juncker and all the commissioner, European, the European government is the first one that need to be digitized. So they really need to push into transforming themselves and simplifying their bureaucracy. Otherwise, you're going to have always people saying, Brussels is a disaster. And, and that's, uh, that's the part that they need to really focus on. Diego, I think you are an absolute role model, model and, and listening to you... I'm not sure my um, children would agree with that, but yes. I think it's a call for action to all of us. Uh, government can only be as good as it should be if we involve one way Absolutely. or the other. It cannot be separate. Um, it has the, it, it's in the future, there's going to be way more involvement from people like you and within running and yes. not just thinking... Psh. And that we must make sure that people like you can, can play a major role, an important role for certain projects is an essential. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Uh, Steffi is killing me.